Greetings! Okay, today I thought you might like to take a look at the Beginner's Computer Handbook Understanding and Programming the Micro and let's not forget this is a complete guide. As with books of this age, uh, many of them were available in a series of normally about, about three books. Uh, Asborn Books used to do it and so did this company. Oh, this is Asborn. This is an Asborn book. Yeah, so this was common for Usborne books. Um, they used to release three, uh, a set of books, normally three, uh, in this case Understanding the Micro, Computer Programming and Computer Space Games, and then bundle them up in a complete reference guide. All you need for your micro. Um, big fan of Usborne books. I did have this one. This is one I've had to repurchase just to share the delights with you. Uh, it talks about 8-bit computers of the day. It was from 1983. There we go, Meet the Micro. Uh, got a generic Commodore 64 slash VIC-20 image there. Shows you how to set it up. Plug the TV lead in, mains lead, power socket, ready. Seems a bit spectrum-y. Programming the Micro. So they, as with most of these books, they use robots to, to depict things happening, how a computer works in the real real life. So what's this? This is a computer looking for some instructions about how to pick up a paint pot and brush before climbing the ladder. Silly robots. There we go, print, tell me the password, chief input, P dollar, uh, clear the screen. This is a sort of standard program, early first program, and then guess the password. You have two tries to get the password right. Uh, this is showing you what RAM is. Keyboard, BBC Micro. So what are, we, what are we talking about here? Spacebar, using the shift key. Here is something that looks rather suspiciously like a ZX Spectrum. Programs for the Micro. Where to get programs? You can buy microcomputer magazines containing listings at most news agents. Some are produced especially for one kind of micro. Others have programs for several different machines. Another quite cheap way of getting them is to buy collections of them in books. Ah, the old books where you could type in the code line by line. Of course, they were in magazines as well, often with errors. So you'd spend a day writing some code out, especially if you had a spectrum. Okay shitty keyboard and then it wouldn't work. You'd have to wait till the next month before the correction was published if it was ever published. Writing your own programs? Look at this. Tell me your part. So this is the, part, the uh, password program. This one has got a lot of printing. I'll just do. Press the right brake to run the brakes. Just an input program. Running programs, saving programs, micro pictures. A micro makes pictures by lighting up tiny areas called pixels on the screen. Of course, in the 80s, this was all pretty new, so books like this were you know, pretty compelling. They still are to me. Inside the keyboard, this is uh, this looks like a Sinclair circuit board, motherboard. Yeah, uh, it's got the chips there, looking at the chip. Lovely jubbly. How chips are made. How chips work. More about, I like, I like this page. Here is a Z80 chip, and here is a 6502 chip. Mm, just the same pictures, just different colors. Um, yeah, very helpful. Cheers, lads. Uh, here's how the ROM works, represented by computers. Here is the story of the micro. The first computers were built before transistor switches were invented. Yep. In the 1960s, the US government was competing in the space race and needed small, powerful computers. Of course, space has always been a driver for technology, hasn't it? Uh, computer chains, look at this. This is an early internet type 
setup. Okay, networks. Com computers can be linked together in nets or networks, usually using a telephone. Wow. Awesome. Dialing a computer. Microcontrol. Is adding to your micro. Look, there's a ZX81 with a RAM pack. Not falling out the back. Not in this picture. Not true to real life, clearly. Here's a ZX81 and a ZX Spectrum. Ooh, look at that. A sharp PC1500. Little tiny thing. Book 20. No Commodore 64 in here. Obviously, this book was a bit too early for the 64. And here's the next book, Computer Programming Introduction. It goes over the basics again, inside a micro, ROM, there you go. Sectioned off, you can't write to that. The RAM, you can write to that. And there's the CPU, giving a computer instructions. Writing programs, what the fuck is that? An ant? First words in basic. Ready, print snails. Snails, print snails, snails, print X, Y, Z. Wow. Incredible. Giving the computer information. Yep. Using input, doing things with print. Wow, you can do anything with print, can't you? I am space out. Was he on drugs or something? I am really spaced out. Yeah, clearly this was written by someone. Hi. How computers compare things? Programs with lots of basic. What does this program do? Let's, let's see. Uh, let's see equals zero. I would like to talk to you, so it waits for the user to input something. Tell me something that silly that happened to you this week. Uh, print B dot B, B dot, oh, sorry. Uh, input C dot R. So it asks the computer, asks you to, ask you for something silly, and then it retrieves it, and then depending on your answer, it goes to a specific line. What is that? BBC Micro. Yeah. Drawing pictures, playing games, making loops. Loop, loop. Subroutines, code making, graphs and symbols, more graphics. Funny poems program. The next few pages show you how to write a program which can compose lots of poems. Wow! It takes different sets of words and then bundles them together. Nice. Programming tips. There's that strange ant creature again. Ooh, look. Space Invader. Ooh, hello. And the last book is Computer Space Games. Obviously space being massive. Literally. <laughs> back in the day, back in the 80s, space was huge. Space program, Star Wars, Battlestar, Galactica. God, there may be the only two I can ever think of. But there was clearly a lot more than that. Doctor Who. So this is just a book full of programs you can type in, which uh, are very simple space games, normally involving taking some text from the user and then printing a response depending on what you put in. Trip into the future. Wow, look, it's the Eden Project. Nice. They should do that, shouldn't they? Build a city inside the Eden Project. It might kind of the point of the Eden project and probably dive pollution. Puzzle corner. How can you make the valley longer? Uh, Death Valley. Nice, I like the sound of this. And the good thing about basic on these machines is much of it was interchangeable. Some code some some commands were different from machine to machine, but things like print, input, uh, go sub, go to, yeah, four loops. They were all pretty standard. So that's for the ZX, ZX81 and then for other computers you need to make this change. I presume these characters represent different computers. Yeah, see page 98 for meaning. 
We won't bother going into there. No oh, space rescue. That's good. Notice there's no assembly code in here. That was a little bit too advanced for this type of book. The thing is, you don't, you don't really get these anymore, do you? People, I know programming is coming back a bit with like the Raspberry Pi and make your own stuff on the Android. But you know, we it was like a six year old, seven years old. I was six when I was typing these things into a computer and learning how to program. You don't get that anymore. It's a, it's a big loss. It was fun making your own games, making your own programs, using your mind to be creative about how, what, doing exactly what you wanted to make. It's just, that isn't available. And I know I sound like an old whinging bastard, repeating the same things that people do about these things, but it's a shame. But times move on, things change, blah, blah, blah. And this is the Beginner's Computer Handbook. Lovely little book from 1983. Let me just check the date. Yeah, first published in 1983. So, there we go. The Beginner's Computer Handbook. Never leave home without it. Thanks for watching.